Hello. Last week in our module, we introduced the lower atmosphere and used the components of air to describe the structure of matter. This week, we introduce a number of essential chemical concepts by describing some of the chemical reactions that occur in the troposphere. This module raises the issues of assessing and managing risk. The Clean Air Act of the 1970s responded to a public demand to stop the degradation of our common air supply. The EPA's ambient air quality standards for a chemical are based on the toxicity and the extent and duration of exposure for different groups of people. We know that risk is perceived differently by different individuals. These gases in the air and the particulates, otherwise known as aerosols, in the air are considered primary pollutants. They are generated directly by both natural and industrial processes. To maintain the quality of our life support systems, we must make sure these pollutants do not damage our environment. Remember, healthy people are part of the new business model of balancing the health of people, the planet, and profits. About 90 elements occur naturally on Earth. The vast majority are solid under normal conditions and are classified as metals. The periodic table is a way of arranging the elements based on their mass and reactivity. Elements with similar reactivity are arranged in vertical columns called groups. Chemists write in a shorthand using a one or two letter symbol for each element. We combine symbols to describe a compound's composition. Using hydrogen, oxygen, and water as examples, this slide shows four ways to represent the composition of substances. It also shows that water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen in a fixed ratio of two to one. The number of atoms in a particular model molecule is given as a subscript. Combustion is a common chemical reaction. Chemists can use an equation as shorthand to describe the process. In accordance with the law of conservation of mass, the number of atoms present at the start of the reaction always equals the number present at the end of the reaction. In this simple example, one carbon atom reacts with two oxygen atoms to form one molecule of carbon dioxide. Let's go through the process of balancing the combustion equation for bottled gas. Bottled gas is a hydrocarbon, that is, made up of only hydrogen and carbon atoms, as we see in the chemical formula for propane. Balancing equations is more of an art than a science and is generally accomplished by trial and error, from left to right and back again. There are three carbons on the reactant side, all in the propane molecule, so there must be three carbons on the product side. Because carbon dioxide is the only product with carbon there, we must use three carbon dioxide molecules produced for every propane molecule that is burned. There are eight hydrogens in every propane molecule, so there will be, will be four water molecules produced for every molecule of propane burned. And how much oxygen would be required? Because there will be six oxygens in the CO2 products and four oxygens in the water products, we know that there have to be 10 oxygens on the reactant side to balance. 
Always recheck that the equation is balanced when you finished. In this case, 10 oxygen atoms are in five oxygen reactant molecules. Nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide are both emitted from tail pipes as primary pollutants. NO is also generated by the breakdown of NO2 in the sunlight. So some of the NO in air is secondary. Ozone in the troposphere is a secondary pollutant. Because of the low sunlight in the long winter, ozone is not a major problem in the far north. Ozone in the troposphere is created by photochemical energy that drives a complex reaction. In big cities, ozone pollution injures people's lungs because of the high reactivity of the molecule and their extensive exposure. The state of Alaska is struggling to clean up the air. You can visit this website to learn more.